I am so excited to be with you today. Um, you know, God is doing something miraculous um, in all of our lives. So just going to give it a moment uh, for folks to cop on and get the notification. And yeah. I see you coming on and you know the drill when you get on, go ahead and drop your city, drop your state, um, because God definitely has a word for us. Um, and so I, again, I'm just waiting for folks to come on. Um, I know Facebook does slow notifications. <laughs> so good afternoon, some places. It's still morning here in California. Um, you know, it's still morning time. <laughs> and so as you're coming on, I see you, Victorville, California, Langston, Michigan, Oh, this is good. This is good. And just begin to tag and share again this algorithm with um, Facebook. It has not. Um, it doesn't always allow people to see the notifications. Um, so go ahead and do that for me. I am actually going to go on myself, um, but I see you. Um, and God wants us to, to know uh, that we can hold on. God literally wants you to know that hold on. Hold on. I know things look a little crazy. I know things look a little um, unorthodox, but God said to hold on. Hold on. <laughs> All right, Palmdale, California. Yes, lunch break ending in a few minutes. It's okay. It's okay. I know I'm so sorry. Lunch break is ending. Um, but uh, we are excited. And again, uh, go ahead and begin to share, begin to tag um, so that, uh, yeah, we want to see what God is doing. I see you, Chelsea. That's okay. Hi. Yes. I see you, Patricia. Hello. Hello. So God wants you to know um, to hold on. So here's one of the biggest uh, things uh, that the enemy wants to uh, throw at you. It's that thing called delay. When we think of delay, we automatically think that God is upset with us. We automatically think that that's a no. We think that maybe God is somehow, you know, punishing us because there is some type of delay um, as it relates to what God is saying or doing um, in our lives. But that is not the case. Uh, God wants you to know that. Hold on. Let me get in here. Um, there we go. God wants you to know that just because the delay has happened, that does not uh, mean that God is not going to do it. That doesn't mean that he hasn't already released that thing into the atmosphere, but you have to hold on, hold on. So again, I'm waiting for uh, just a few more because again, that Facebook notification algorithm has kind of messed up how things are flowing. So if you're on here, go ahead and tag an SGI a person, a, a leader um, without fail. Uh, let's make that just customary to do um, so that we can get the word out um, as, uh, you know, sometimes Facebook does not let us be great. <laughs> and so, again, you want to hold on. Um, <clears throat> Now, with that being said, there we released the prophetic word last week about um, unusual miracles and May being the month of miracles. And then God told me, he said, Tamara, come back and tell them to hold on because one, the month is not over. And two, just because there has been some element of delay, maybe you were thinking God was going to do it right then and there. He told me to encourage you to increase your faith, because at this time we are going to need the faith of God. We are going to need the faith of God to move the mountains. We are going to need everything that God has said uh, for us. We're going to have to pull out those faith scriptures. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to hold on without fail, without regardless of what uh, the situation looks like. We have to hold on. And so I am reminded of the scripture, uh, and let me pull that up for you, um, because I, I'm telling you what God is wanting to do right now. We cannot, um, we cannot uh, delay. And I'm putting it. I'm sorry, my notes here have kind of went away. There, there we go. Yes, God. Um, and so we're going to go through. We're going to be coming out of Hebrews 10 and 23. 
Hebrews 10 and 23. Hebrews 10 and 23. Okay. Hebrews 10 and 23. Yes, God. Go ahead and put that in the comments. Yes, Lord. Yes, there you go. I see it. Yes. And so that is going to be um, the scripture in which we are going to uh, pivot everything off of. I'm sorry, we're having some... Um, some technical difficulties. There we go. Hebrew 10, 23. And it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without waving for he, for he is faithful that has promised. Okay. For he is faithful that has promised. And that is one of the things that we need to go in knowing that the word of the Lord was released. That May is the month of unusual miracles, not just miracles, but unusual miracles. They're not going to make sense. They're not going to line up with our understanding. Some of them are going to be unexpected waves of miracles that you were not even uh, mentally or emotionally set up for, but God is getting ready to do this thing. And the first thing the enemy tries to come and snatch when a word is released, he comes after your faith. He wants you to think that it's not going to happen because time has waned. When we receive the word, um, we are excited. When we receive uh, a prophetic utterance or when God comes in during those moments of, of intimacy, we must make sure that we guard the word and we have to apply Hebrews 10 and 23 that says, let us hold fast to the profession. Now we're going to go deeper and we're going to explain this because this is where many of us get lost. This is where many of us get lost. Um, um, yes, the, many of us get lost here. Why? Because... Um, because this is where um, we don't want to hold fast to our profession. We hold fast to time. We hold fast to the situation. We hold fast to things that are happening around us, but we do not hold fast to the confession of our faith. And God is saying, what is it that you're confessing? This is why uh, when the prophetic word comes, again, I tell you, Promise Life, how do you um, um, partner with God in, a, um, in, in helping the word manifest itself? How do you partner with God in allowing the word to manifest? This is how you would do it. You go ahead and you write the prophetic word down. You write those promises from God down and you begin to pray the word. You pray the prophecies. You pray the scriptures. This is how we're going to hold fast to our profession. And we're wondering, the enemy's trying to tell us, well, time has happened. It's not, it, God must be upset. Maybe uh, you did, maybe you did something that disqualified you from the word. And God told me to hop on in this particular Bible study to say this thing that God is getting ready to do, it is a reward. It is, it is something that is beyond your comprehension. You can't earn this miracle. That is why God said he was sending out miracles in the month of May. He didn't say blessings. Blessings are conditional. We see this in... Um, we see this in uh, scripture in Deuteronomy when the children of Israel are going to possess the promised land, which was a blessing, right? Th um, the Lord gave them, if you do this, I'll bless you. If you do this, I'll bless you. If you don't do this, you won't receive the blessings. Blessings are often conditional when we see in scripture. But God did not tell us that he was releasing uh, uh, blessings in the month of May. He said miracles and miracles don't have any bearing on your performance. Miracles don't go back and look to see that you pray and do everything right. Miracles are just that. Sometimes you getting the blessing is the miracle because you know you don't deserve it. Oh, I'm talking real good. Sometimes that in fact is the miracle that the blessing that you receive, you did not deserve it, but God still allowed it to happen in your life. It is a miracle and the miracles of God are still going to happen, but we must hold on to the profession of our faith. We must hold fast. We cannot let it go. We must be dogmatic about it. 
We must be dogmatic about it. So I want to help those who don't have the understanding because miracles you don't qualify for. You don't qualify for a miracle. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he received a what? A miracle. The Bible did not say that he served God. Matter of fact, he was in doubt and disbelief when Jesus approached him. I'm trying to help someone because the enemy wants to talk you out of receiving your miracle. And the devil is a lie and all of his children. You're going to receive what God God has for you this month. And we're not going to be afraid of time. We're not going to be afraid of our works. We're not going to try to go ahead and work things out. No, 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 no. We're going to stand fast and hold fast to the profession of our faith. God is saying to us, it is a miracle and miracles don't, you don't need to qualify for miracles. Again, the man at the pool of the Bethesda, when Jesus approached him, he was full of doubt he was full of fear. And what was his profession? I have no one to put me in the water. He was complaining. Um, he was full of doubt, disbelief, complaints, um, you know, uh, just, you know, one of those negative people, never uh, really uh, having faith. You don't hear him talking faith. But what happens? He still gets his miracle of healing. I'm trying to prove to you by scripture because literally during my time of prayer for you, promise line, um, God was saying they, they get excited when they receive the word, but it's walking the word out. It's walking the word out that causes a problem. It's walking the word out that causes a distraction. It's walking the word out that causes us to get weary in well-doing. But we know that the Bible says, do not get weary in well-doing. What is the well-doing? What is the well-doing when you receive the word? The well-doing is saying, listen, I'm holding fast. In order to hold fast to something, you have to have a tight grip of it. I'm pausing because I want to slow myself down so that you get this teaching. In order for you to hold fast to the profession or hold fast to anything, that means that you have a tight grip on it. And many a times we feel like that we can hold on to multiple things at once. And God said that is not holding fast. You cannot multitask your faith. Oh, Rashi, you cannot try to hold on to your fears and hold on to God at the same time. But when he says hold fast, that means your grip is being strengthened. That means everything within you is holding on to the word of God and there is no room to hold on to anything else. You can't hold on to past experiences. You can't hold on to disappointment. You can't hold on to rejection. You can't hold. But if you're holding fast to what God has told you, holding fast to your profession of faith. So what is your profession? We know that God is going to do it. What are you confessing? Because some of us actually are receiving what we're holding on to. And God wants to break that off of our minds and really push us and propel us forward out of stagnation. When you think holding fast, you think of being still. But God is saying the reason why you have to hold fast is because faith is trying to take you somewhere. Faith is trying to propel you somewhere. Faith is driving and getting you to your purpose. And you got you have to hold on to it with everything that's in you. Because notice... Um, um, I'm reminded of of, uh, of a person like, you know, in those action movies, right? They're sitting there and they're in a, in a car and maybe the car is driving off and the person is on top of the car and you see them holding on and they're holding on for dear life. Why? Because that car is zooming and turning and, and twisting. And so they're holding on. And God is saying that is exactly how we have to hold on to our faith. Faith is driving, trying to get us to the destination, but our, we have to hold fast to what God is saying. And we cannot look to the left. We cannot look to the right. We must hold on to what God has promised us. I'm still in Hebrews 10 and 23. And it says, um, confession of our faith without wavering. Why? For he who promised is faithful. So you know what you're really holding on to? You're not holding on your own ability. No, ma'am. No, sir. You are holding on to the fact that God, the one who promised the May is the month of miracles, the God who promised that your enemies were going to be able to promote you and bless you, the one who promised you healing in your body, the one who said that your marriage was getting ready to be whole, the one who said he was going to heal your finances, that the God that we serve, our Abba Father, Jesus Christ, the, the son of the living God, the one who made the promise, he is faithful. He is faithful. 
He is faithful. If you don't take nothing else out of this teaching uh, this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're watching from, is that God is faithful faithful. I know you've dealt with a lot of people and a lot of raggedy people to be exact. A lot of people who've not kept their word. A lot of people who backed out of the deal. A lot of people who, who meant well, but it didn't end up panning out. A lot of people who made promises that they could not keep. A lot of people who have said things and, and promised to give things and it just didn't pan out. But God is faithful. He is faithful. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he is not a man that he shall lie, nor a son of man that he has to repent. If he said a thing, he will establish it. And I'm coming to encourage you, no matter where you are right now, I don't care what they, it looks like. I don't care how many no's they tell you. I don't care how it seems to get worse before it gets better. The God who made the promise is what? Faithful. Hey, hey, God is faithful. I'll put, I'll put money on it. God is faithful. He has never left you, nor will he forsake you. He's ride or die. He is on your side. And I know the situation is trying to tell you, perhaps you missed it. Perhaps it was for somebody else. Perhaps you didn't do everything right, but God is saying, no, a miracle does not require works. A miracle doesn't require you to measure up. So heathens can get miracles. Uncircumcised Philistines, those who don't serve God can experience miracles. Miracles fall on the just and the unjust. There is no a criteria for a miracle other than receiving it and believing it. And God is saying if he can just pull you out of that place of thinking you have to work for it, of thinking you have to earn this thing. God said, I am faithful. Put that in the comments. God is faithful. See, we are holding on to God. We're not holding on to our own abilities. Some of you heard the word and you went out and you start trying to work it. And God says, no, it's something that you have to receive. The man again at the pool of Bethesda, he tried to work his own miracle. He kept trying to get to the troubled waters, but someone would beat him in. But God is saying, don't you know, you don't need to get to a troubled water. Even you had a plan of action in place that God doesn't need your plan to create the miracle. Oh, I'm going to say that again. The man at the pool of Bethesda had a plan in place. His plan was if I can get close enough to the water when it is trouble, I can just get in and God's going to heal me. But God wants you to know, promise life, ma'am or sir, that God does not need your action plan, your strategy to bless you. God, the Lord himself has a plan and his plan is God good and his plan is going to prosper you. And he looked at the man at the pool of Bethesda and what did he tell him to do? Take up your bed and walk. That sounds contrary to anything uh, that you would think a crippled person would need to do to be healed. And God says that is a part of the unusual miracles, the unusual instructions. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm feeling this. The unusual instructions that's going to come, um, that's going to unlock the miracle. He was thinking this whole time that Jesus was going to possibly trouble the water or maybe Jesus was going to stand there and wait for the water to be troubled and make sure he got in first. Notice how he had boxed his healing, his miracle into a certain method. Notice this, the man at the pool of Bethesda had locked himself in to a certain way of how God was going to perform a miracle. And God says, I need you to hold fast to me, not to your uh, preference, not to how you think I'm going to do it, not even how you've seen me work miracles in the past. Oh my God. Don't you know sometimes that is our biggest issue of how God has blessed us in the past. And so we want to lock him and, 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 and box him in to how he did it before. This is how he's going to do it again. That's exactly what the man was doing again at the pool of Bethesda. God was healing people through the troubled water. And so the man limited himself and limited his expectation and said, well, I guess God can only heal through the troubling of the water. But I'm talking to about four of you right now. Can I prophesy? Can I stay in my office and prophesy to you that God is saying that he's getting ready to give you instructions, that that in themselves are the working of miracles, that that in themselves is going to sound so crazy. But as you begin to heed the words of the Lord and hold on to what God has promised you, you will begin to see unusual miracles. And we know the story that the men actually took up his bed and he walked.
There was no water involved. The pool of Bethesda was not even needed. Jesus did not need antics. He did not need tradition. He did not need tricks. He did not even need the man's plan. All he needed the all he needed was the man's obedience. Hey, hey, hey. All he needed was someone who would follow the instructions. All he needed was someone to hold on to his word. That's all God needed. And the miracle manifested. The miracle manifested. Um, that's our New Testament um, um, example. Uh, but I'm reminded of a uh, layman, the, 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 the general who had leprosy. And he went to the prophet Elijah. There was a, 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 a um, young lady who said, hey, I know a prophet, a man of Israel, he can heal you. And so the man Laban went to the prophet Elijah. And when he went to him, he wanted him to tell him something fancy. He wanted him to lay hands on him. But the scripture tells us that he told Laban to go dip in the Jordan seven times. Now the Jordan out of all of the rivers was not the cleanest. Um, it had, it was mucky, it was muddy. It, you know, he was like, can't you tell me to go dip in some other place? Like, don't you want to even come out and see me? And because Laban needed a miracle, but what was, what was bothering him, what was blocking Laban from receiving his miracle was the unusual instruction. Oh, I hear this. Please hear this. Oh my God, the unusual instruction, it threw him off. It seemed too crazy. And sometimes the unusual instruction seems so simple. It seems so simple. We want complexity. We want the deeper things of God. We want it to sound so deep and mystical. And if it's not deep and mystical, we think we've missed God. But God wants you to know if you just hold on to the simple truths of God, that those are the things that are gonna cause you to walk into your miracle and to walk into your purpose. Purpose. And Laban goes ahead and um, his servant said, well, if he asked you to do a hard thing, like, would you be more willing to do it? And so we know the story that Laban dips in the Jordan seven times and the leprosy is healed instantly. The Bible says that his skin is so smooth, like unto a baby. God begins to even rejuvenate, not just heal him from the leprosy, but heal and rejuvenate his skin. And God is saying, how many of you um, are ready for your miracle, but the instructions of the Lord are so simple that you're missing him. Some of you, oh, Rashi, I feel that. My God, sometimes the instructions are so unusual and so sim the simplicity of them will cause us to miss God because we want um, we want deep or revelatory things and instructions. Um, if God made it complex, uh, you you would feel more apt and better about it. And the reason that is is because a part of you still wants to earn it. See, the more complex the instructions, the more you feel like if I work for it, then God will do it. And God is saying, you can't work for this. You can't earn miracles. Miracles aren't earned. They're given. They're gifts. The Bible lists the working of miracles as a gift. It is a gift. It has nothing to do. You cannot earn this. You can't work for it. God has to give it to you. And sometimes the miracle is unlocked through simplicity in instructions. The instructions are so simple, simple things like go that way. And you have no idea who's over there that way. Go ahead and forgive. Go to bed on time. Do this. Go make a doctor's appointment. God will give you simple instructions and you'll say, well, God, no, that can't be it because that's not enough to get the miracle. And God says, will you be like Laban and just go ahead and dip in the Jordan seven times and watch what I do. We got to hold fast. We have to hold fast to our faith. We have to hold fast to what God is saying and what God is doing. If we're going to see what God has for us, don't you let the enemy talk you out of it. Don't you let your emotions talk you out of it. Why? Because too much time has passed or it doesn't seem to be difficult enough. 
in our culture, we want things difficult. If they're easy to, you know, to figure out, we feel like eh, it wasn't even worth our time. But God is saying he's speaking in the small, still voice. He's speaking in the small, still voice in this season. And he's giving simple instructions like wait, be still, pray, go forward. Don't do it. Yes. And because those are all simple commands, God says many of us will miss it if we don't just heed heed to the instructions. And I want you to put that in the comments. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. We know that Laban grappled back and forth with receiving his miracle, but in fact, he did receive his miracle. Why? Because at the end of the day, he said, I'm just going to go ahead and follow the instructions of the Lord. And that's exactly what he did. And I know, again, me just telling you to put, I'm going to listen in the comments seems so simple that we won't even do that because uh, what is that going to do? But what happens is when God tells you to do something so simple, it is a prophetic act. It is your act saying, Lord, yes, I believe you. Lord, yes, I trust you. Yes, God, I am going to listen. Speak to me. And God will give you a strategy. He will give you instructions to unlock your miracle. I'm going to listen. Put that in the comments. Even if you're watching on the replay, we want you to participate because I really feel strongly that you are prophesying to yourself. You're telling doubt and fear that you're going to listen to the Lord. You're telling rejection that you're not going to listen to how you were rejected before and how uh, people overlooked you. So God must be ready to overlook you. No, we're not going to have that same mindset. You're telling all of your fears. You're telling your past, your present, and your future that listen, I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to follow the instructions of the Lord. I am going to do it. Even if it doesn't make sense to me, even if it seems foolish to take up my bed and walk and I haven't walked in 38 years, I'm going to listen. Even if it sounds silly for me to dip in a dirty river to get the leprosy off of my skin, I am going to do it. I don't care. I am going to listen. I'm going to listen to the Lord. I'm going to hold fast, fast to the confession of my faith. And listen, I'm going somewhere. God blesses people who listen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, God. God wants you to understand that. And so uh, I want to go to Deuteronomy 10 and 20. Deuteronomy 10 and 20, it says, fear the Lord your God and serve him, hold fast to him and take your oath in his name. In essence, God is saying, hold on to me. I don't want you, if you're holding on to God, you have to let go of something else. I'm going to ask you a very simple question, but this question is getting ready to, to help us really identify why we're having a hard time. This Bible study this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're watching, I'm God is trying to encourage your faith. He's trying to unravel you out of fear. He's trying to break your mind free from old thinking. He's trying to break your mind free from old processes that you have embedded in your soul because of past trauma, past disappointments, past hurts, and you have just Put yourself on autopilot, but God says through the teaching is where you're going to receive your miracle. And I'm going to prove that to you by scripture. But Deuteronomy 10 and 20 says, fear the Lord, your God. That fear there is not like a scary fear because he's going to get me. It's a reverence fear. It's a, it's a respect. It's an honor. So honor the Lord, fear the Lord and serve him. Hold fast and take your oaths in his name. Anything that you're going to do, you're going to put God in the midst of it. And if you're going to hold on to God, you have to let go of your fear. You have to let go of the rejection. Oh, I feel the pool. I know I'm talking to at least three of you. I know it. I feel the pull. This is why you need to be tagging a friend, a sister, girl, an enemy, because God is shifting and doing something and he's trying to get us to a place, promised life. When I tell you during my time of prayer, the Lord told me, he said, anything um, that is attached to the promised life, we'll see uh, the manifestation of the miracles. And I begin to contend for you. I begin to pray for you, promised life. And God began to tell me, he said, there is such a blessing. There is such a blessing on promised life. There 
is such an amazing anointing, a favor that we have. And as we link and as you sow and as you share and as you partner with us, God is partnering with you in your projects and your things. And he said, Tamara, but they are afraid to let go because of fear. And God said, you cannot, if God is telling us, hold on, hold on to what? Hold on to him. That means we have to let go of familiarity. We have to let go of disappointment. We have to let go of this orphan spirit, this abandonment, thinking that everybody is going to abandon you. God says, let that thing go. And a part of receiving our miracle is that we are also going to be getting delivered at the same time. We serve such a good God that the man at the pool of Bethesda not only received physical healing, but God delivered him from that um, spirit of fear. God delivered him of that spirit of infirmity. God delivered his mind and he gave him a transference of mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The man at the pool of Bethesda had a renewing of his mind experience. He was not just healed physically, but his mind was healed out of 38 years of disappointment out of 38 years of being an orphan and feeling abandoned, God healed his legs and healed his mind. Whoa, And God is saying to you that if you let go of that orphan, if you let go of the cast down and the heaviness and the anxiety and the worry, the chronic worrying and the suffering that you do to yourself, the self-rejection, if you let it go and hold on to Jesus, he's not only going to heal your body, but he will will heal your mind. He is doing a double work in all of this, says the Lord of hosts. He's doing a double work. You believing him for the month, the uh, May being the month of miracles. And you're saying, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, do it, God, do it, God. And God is saying, don't you know that I'm not only going to give you the miracle, but in the process, I'm healing your mind. Oh, Rashi, I'm healing your mind from this rejection. I hear it. God says some of you can't even receive from God because you could not receive from your father. Some of you didn't know your father or you had a controlling mother and or, or circumstances in your life just seems to be uh, uh, rooted and grounded in disappointment and heartache and pressures and strife and struggle. And God is saying in this month of May, the part of the unusualness and the miracles is not only the instruction, but it's going to be a double fold that in the process, God is going to heal your mind and elevate your faith. I prophesy that now that God is healing your mind. Hey, and elevating your faith. Why? Because we're going to learn how to hold fast to God not our situation. We're not going to hold fast to the notice. We're not going to hold fast to the bill. We're not going to hold fast to the people who rejected us. We're not going to hold fast to the issues. We're not going to hold fast, but we are going to hold fast to the word of the Lord. And God said that we have a double portion promise life. Hey, hey, we have a double portion. So yes, we're getting our miracle. Yes, we are going to walk in unusual miracles, but he's also healing our mind and he's renewing it and he's restoring it and he's refreshing it. And some of you are going to come out and your thinking is getting ready to be elevated because you were thinking thinking too low. You were thinking as a beggar, as an orphan, someone who doesn't deserve it. But God says, yes, yes, son, daughter, it is for you. And yes, son, daughter, it is for you. It is for you, says the Lord of hosts. He's doing something so special and so unique um, that it cannot even be explained. But God is saying he wants you to hold on to him. Let go of the pride. Some of you, Rashi, I hear that so strong. God said you're holding on to the pride. You're holding on. You don't even want nobody to know what you really have need of because your pride doesn't want people to know that you don't have it together. And because you post so well and you put this image up that everything is wonderful, it's hard for you to even in, God, in God's presence to just be naked and unashamed because you have sold this image of having it all together. So this pride keeps you locked out of experiencing God in new and refreshing ways. And so instead of holding fast to God, you're holding fast to your image. You're holding fast to that pride. You're holding fast to what you want 
want people to view you and how you want them to see you. But God says, will you let it go? Let go of the issues and hold fast to God. Let go of the rejection and hold fast to God. Let go of your insecurities and hold fast to God. Why? Because the miracle is coming. Oh my God. My God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I dare you to say, uh, let it go and put what you're letting go of. I challenge you. I challenge you to make the devil out of a lie and go ahead and bust this thing wide open. You go ahead and say, listen, I'm letting go of my pride. I'm letting go of my rejection. I'm letting go of people pleasing. I'm letting go. Some of you can't even get the miracle because you don't want people to think that you think you're all that. Well, here's the news flash and here's the public service announcement. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, he made me all that because he is all that and I am hidden in him. So that will dispel this myth of trying to have this false humility where, oh no, I don't want people to think I'm more than what I am. Well, I am all that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, says the Lord of hosts. And if I abide in him and he is a good thing and he is an amazing thing, then I too must be a good thing. I too must be an amazing thing. Why? Because I am hidden in Jesus and through the blood of Jesus, I am made flawless. Hey, this is why we call the conference flawless. It's not because we're talking about makeup and lashes, but what God is saying is I am have a woman that's a Rising, and she's arising in her identity. She's arising in who I called her to be. And in that, she is made flawless as she hold on to God's unchanging hand, hold on to God's given identity, hold on to who God said you are, hold on to what God has promised you in the midnight hour, hold on to those scriptures that God keeps bubbling up in your spirit. Hold on. Why? Because God is doing a great work. God is doing a great work. Yeah, God, ha, God is doing a great work. Yes, Lord, God is doing a great work. Great work. I see you. Yes. Begin to say what you're letting go. I'm not even going to begin to tell you how I'm going to make my list. Why? Because I don't have time uh, to try to figure out what people want to say about me. I don't have time to try to figure out what they think about me. You're going to think what you're going to think. I can't control you. I can only control my response. And I have decided to hold on. I know time has showed up and it has told me that I might be a little too old. Time has showed up and told you, you might be a little too young or you might be a little too old. Time has tried to tell you, maybe you missed it. Maybe you missed the opportunity, but baby, the, the miracle, hey, hey, the miracle is that he can bring opportunities back around again. It, the miracle is that he is a, a restorer. He can redeem that what was lost and missed and eaten up by the canker worm, the Bible says. He is a restorer store. He can bring that thing back around full circle and you won't miss a moment. Adam in the garden, he might have thought he missed the moment, but Jesus had a backup plan. And Jesus said, no, Adam, you didn't miss it. I needed to send the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ. And through Jesus, all missed opportunities have now been restored. Woo, come on, let's, let's, let's apply the Bible here. Let's apply the Bible here. God doesn't want you to think that you missed anything. God can restore and redeem. He did it in the garden and he will do it again. That garden moment not only tells us how he can redeem us from sin, but Adam made a mistake. But God says, I'm going to send my son, Jesus, who's going to restore, who's going to redeem. And through the redemption and restoring power of Jesus Christ, we don't have to um, be held under the penalty of missing, missed opportunities. We repent and we move on. My God, that's so good to me. Ah, God, 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 I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you break off of that mindset. I'm telling you, we preach it, we shout over miracles, but we don't even know how to properly receive a miracle. And it's just holding on to God. I am reminded of um, the disciples when 
they um, were walking by and the man asked Peter, he said, can you, you know, can you give me some money, alms for the poor? He was begging for alms and Peter um, and them said, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, um, I'll give that to you. And they prayed for the man and the man was healed. He thought his miracle was about receiving resources for that particular day, but God had a bigger miracle in store for him. God wanted to heal his entire body. See, the man um, here it wasn't the one holding on, but Peter and them were holding on for the man. Their faith, they had enough faith to pull this man out of a cycle of, 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 of depression, out of a cycle of begging, out of a cycle of poverty, out of a cycle of infirmity. Do you see this in the scriptures? And so Peter and them says, listen, I know you're asking for silver and gold and money, and we don't even have that. But what we do have is we have the ability to change your life forever. And instead of begging, you can now go out and see, you can now go out and walk. You can now go out and have a normal life. You can go out and now live the life that God has promised you. And God is saying, we must hold on to the word of God. I want to encourage you down in your soul. I don't care how many no's you have been told. I don't care how many uh, people have rejected you. I don't care how many people said that'll never work. I don't care how many years you have been doing it. I don't care how many failed attempts you had. I don't care what have people have walked off from you. I don't care if they've abandoned you. I don't care if they said all manner of evil of you. God says he doesn't care. He's looking for somebody who will hold on to him. And if you hold on, if you hold on, if you hold on, ah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to, to, to navigate this, but God wants you to hold on. You've been hit, you've been hit, but don't you dare let the enemy steal your testimony. You hold on. Don't you dare quit. I don't care. My chapter leaders, can I speak to you? It looks like things just kind of fell apart after um, the, the, the world opened back up. God says, I still called you to lead. I still called you uh, to teach God's people. So you hold on. I'm talking to my SGI, my intercessory team. It seemed like things have been stagnant, but God says, hold on. God has literally been challenging me He's been challenging me within these last couple of days. He said, Tamara, you released the word of miracles. He said, now I need you to hold on to it. And I need you to be on the lookout for your opportunity of miracle. Yeah, I need you to be on the lookout for it. And some of us, because of fear and because of past experience, we don't even look for it. We just go about our day. We heard the word and we got excited. But God says, listen, he said, don't you dare go out into the world like you can't put a demand on the miracle. And I'm reminded of the blinded man who said, oh, son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciples told him to be quiet. And he put a demand on his miracle. He had heard that Jesus was healing people. He had heard that blinded eyes were being opened and the sick was being recovered. And when they tried to shut him up, he'd yell even the more, oh, son of David, have mercy on me. And God is saying, I want to encourage you today to put a demand on the anointing. Go out and look for the miracle. Go out and say, oh, son of David, where are you? Are you are you going to be show up at work today? Are you going to show up while I'm in my car? Are you going to show up while I'm at my house? Are you going to show up while I'm in my getting my Starbucks? Are you going to show up while I'm getting lunch. Oh, son of David, where are you? Because I know my miracle is fast approaching. Where are you? And the Bible says that Jesus heard him and he healed the man's eyes. See, we got to hold fast. The enemy wants you to give up on it. The enemy wants you to hear it for a little bit and get excited. But God is maturing us. God is maturing the body of Christ and pushing us past. Oh, that was feeling good and getting the goosebumps and passing out on the altar. And all of that is fine and well. I, I love it. I love to see God demonstrate his power like that. But what do you do when you get up off the floor? What do you do after the live turns off? What do you do after days have passed and you don't see the word coming to pass? God said, you must hold fast. You got to hold fast. 
Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare give up. Because the God who promised, back to Hebrews 10 and 23, is faithful. The God who promised you, he's not your dad. He's not going to be like your natural father. He's not like your natural mother, although they might have been good people. He's still not them. He's not your boyfriend. He's not uh, uh, the person you were dating. He's not uh, 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 the divorce that happened to you. He's not any of those things. He's not the boss who promised you the promotion but never gave it. God says, no, 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 no. I'm not any of those people. Those are all human beings that can fail. That, And some of it, it might not even be intentionally, but they don't have, they're not God. But the God who promised you, the only one true and living God that promised you miracles, is faithful. So don't you throw Jesus in the bag with everybody else. Don't you let that orphan spirit tell you that's good for everybody else, but I won't get it. God says, no, you, you're included in this. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you, you're included. You've always been excluded. You've always felt like the black sheep. God says, you're not the black sheep in this family of the body of Christ, but you are the chosen one. You are, are a sent one. You are a preferred one. You are a justified one. You are a redeemed one. You too will partake in the miracle of God. Don't you dare let go of God's promises over your life. Hold on and hold fast. So I hope this uh, teaching blessed you um, today. Go ahead and do me a favor and share. Um, we want people to hold on. We want people to not quit. We want people to stand firm. Um, and then the Bible says you will see the salvation of the Lord. You will see it. You will see God work that thing out be right before your eyes. I have seen God do it time and time again. I am a witness. And so I want to encourage you to hold on, hold fast. And then I want to remind you and tell you that we have Flawless Women's Conference coming up. And I just gave you the website right there, down there at the lower third. You don't want to miss this. It is going to be our birthing place. God told me ministries were going to be propelled. Uh, resources were going to give birth. We were going to give birth to ideas and creativity, um, things that we have been pregnant with in our spiritual womb. We are literally going to give birth um, at a flawless conference. It is time for us to take it to the next level. And it's time for us to experience the conquering of God. Um, we talk about being more than a conqueror, but we live in such a defeated culture. Um, and God is saying, no, it it's time for the Debras to arise and show the world how to defeat the enemy. And so God is saying, don't you dare say, I don't have the money. Don't you dare say it's too far. Don't you dare say, don't you know gas prices? God says, hold fast to your confession. You said you wanted to come and watch him work a miracle out for you. Don't you back off of it, but begin to keep Begin to keep declaring what God has said for you. I mean, get you some roommates. And when I tell you the hotel rooms are filling up fast, people are coming. Don't you dare be lost out of the number. Um, and so the information, everything is there on the website. And then also you can um, text to give to sow into the, the word, to sow into the ministry. Um, thank you so much for putting it up. I see uh, someone went ahead and put that up. I can't see who you are because I'm not in the thing. Um, but let me go ahead and click in the video and then I could do that. And so you want to make sure that you are um, doing what God has called you to do. Like, listen, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to miss the conference. You don't want to miss the conference. You don't want to miss the conference. And so they put the cash app, they put the text to give um, up. And so I'm just excited about what God is doing in your life. And I'm telling you, you are going to be blessed. When we get there at Com um, Flawless, we have been fasting and praying. Um, and so listen, it said, thank you for the curse. You're absolutely welcome. And thank you for everything that you have done. Begin to share. We don't want the encouragement to stop here. Um, we don't want to be selfish, but we want to be selfless and we want to encourage someone else. God wants the world to know to hold on because he's not done with his church. He's not 
not done with his people. He's not done with his daughters. And God is getting ready to send revival in the earth like never before. Watch and see. All right, Promise Life. I love you so much. All right. You guys be blessed.